Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Brodo Fantasy Football Podcast. It is week 14, the final week of the regular season. We have made it this far. Next week, the playoffs start. It is now or never in your fantasy leagues, which means, honestly, it's probably the best time ever to download the Fantasy Football by Brodo app. Get all those last-minute tips and tricks that you need. True matchup rank, the absolute best weapon, especially now, 14 weeks through um, the season. Like, the everything that you need in terms of matchups is that can be found in the true matchup rank, because not only does it tell you the, the average points given up at those positions, it tells you the percentage of points over average, which is why true matchup rank is such an important tool, especially for tight ends. We found that it's been a just optimal um, at all times. Tim has called multiple tight end touchdowns this year because of true matchup rank, as he will tell you shortly, Tim is here with me today as well. I'm taking over the reins of hosting though. Um, but yeah, download the fans football Proto what's app. Up? What up, Tim? Yeah, what's up, man? And thanks to the patrons, of course. Patreon.com yeah. slash Broder Fantasy. Uh I, I just sent a picture to the Patreon to the to the Discord with all our patrons. And I right now I'm coming to you from the hallway of my <laughs> apartment building. I live in a it's not really an apartment building, it's a it's a house, a two family house, and I live on the first floor. And the person upstairs I think is on vacation. And my kids are sleeping, and we have thin walls. And I couldn't go to the studio because the the there's been sickness in the studio, so we can't be in the studio because I'm not, I can't get sick, and I can't get these kids sick. It's for us, especially it's the holiday season. <laughs> can't get yeah. sick, so that's why we're here right now. But we're still coming with the same bar as we would at the studio. Uh, apologies for the uh, you know for the low tech, but you know sometimes the best messages come in low tech. Like last week when I, when I uh, uh, humbly, humbly, I say, uh, predicted Evan Ingram's first touchdown of the season as he went off, uh, like Michael was saying, with the help of the Fantasy Football by Broder app, with the help of points over average, true defensive, um, true matchup ranking. And Yeah, I wanted to yeah, say not for to, true not matchup time. rank, the, uh, the sample size. I was blanking on the word sample size, but the sample size of 14 weeks, like it's super legit now. Like – There's no, uh, like earlier in the season, we usually wait like four weeks or so. And, you know, there's a lot of movement, um, even up to halfway or so through the season. Now these numbers are like, are rock solid. And you can see where it has moved because some things have really shifted. Exactly. Um, You can see where it has, where it has lacked the the movement in the last three games. So, I mean, let's, uh, let's let the people find out, uh, the fantasy football by Brodo app, but lots of news to get to. Uh, Michael, I know you usually hound me to get the news out as quick as possible, but I know even now, uh, and I know especially now, Michael's going to say, uh, let's get every single piece of news that we can because every single piece of news is important. Because um, this is the week, right? There's so many people, including myself, that if you do not win this week, it's over. That's yeah. it. Say goodbye to your fantasy team. Now, most people I know that play fantasy have more than one team. I will say that. So it's a, it's a new age in terms of like, Basically, everyone has a playoff team unless you, like, really, really, like, we're not listening to us <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, or the, or using the, the app. You know what I mean? Like, if, if you were, like, you know, lost touch with fantasy. Um, but if you if you were paying attention and you have a bunch of leagues, you're probably <laughs> either fighting for a playoff spot right now or in the playoffs trying to get a bye right now. So, like, this is, this is the week. This is almost like this is championship week one. We're in the midst of four championship weeks right now. Uh, so let's get it started with this news. It's so important. Um, <laughs> Kenneth Walker returned to Seahawks practice, getting a limited session. Um, Zach Charbonnet also got a limited uh, set, uh, limited session in. Excuse me. Um, right now, it looks like both of them are going to play against the 49ers. Obviously, the 49ers, not the best play. Ken Walker was the RB4, um, I, I think four weeks ago, five weeks ago, and Michael acquired him in a trade. That's why I know. And I got mad at Jason for trading Ken Walker. I'm like, how could you trade the RB4 for a group of regular players? Like, how could you do this? Ended up working out for Jason because Kenneth Walker has been kind of ass since then. And then he got, and then he got completely uh, taken w- away by this injury. Michael, you know, you have Kenneth Walker. Uh, you're in a you're in a situation where you could lock up a buy if you win this week. Uh, at the moment, you're starting Kenneth Walker. So with that in mind, how are you feeling about Kenneth Walker and what are your expectations for him? Yeah, Kenneth Walker has been a very, like, I guess, volatile in minds of people because, like, 
yeah, he's had some rough weeks, but like you mentioned, he was the RB4 overall on the season before all of these, uh, the injuries and such, and he was losing some work to Zach Charbonnet, but he was overall, his bad games weren't too bad. Like, he only had one bad game all year in which he didn't leave with an injury like he did against the Rams. Otherwise, he scored at least eight half PPR fantasy points in every single game, which you say you hear eight and you're like, okay, but I mean, that's not nothing like it's at least it's not going to kill you if he ends up with eight points but he's also gone double digits more than half his games like even with Zach Charbonnet there uh Ken Walker gets a decent amount of work uh, he's an explosive runner as we know like sure he could go four carries seven yards 10 carries 20 yards and then he just breaks one out for 40 50 plus yards that's kind of what he does um against San Fran it's a must win game for Seattle obviously you want a better matchup for Ken Walker but I do think he's a, he's an RB2 play as long as he's good to go. I'm just glad that this game is a 4 o'clock start and not a Sunday night or Monday night game because Ken Walker and Zach Charbonnet managers would be completely lost and in the dark because of Pete Carroll. I'm just glad we're going to know on Sunday what to do with these guys oh and if goodness. they're even playing. I mean, you say, you say, thank God it's not Sunday night, but what about like the people who have to make decisions against the 1 o'clock games? Yeah, I mean, I'm like hoping that. there's there's more uh, there's more clarity as the uh, the days go by in terms of practices and and uh, you know injury reports and such. Don't get you the Der- the Derrick Henry managers right now out there. Like, what do we what do we even do, guys? What do we even do? Are we gonna wait until Monday and this guy's not gonna clear concussion po- concussion protocol? Like, what's what's gonna happen? He's playing on Monday night. It's not like you have like why do they put two games on Monday night this week? Why? What is this? Yeah, I don't know. What is this nonsense, NFL? Why I think you just kind of get people used to, like, not only watching on Sundays because then the playoffs start and they have Saturday games. It's so weird to me that they don't have any Saturday regular season games, I guess, because, like, college football owns Saturdays, I suppose. But then they just take yeah, over fine. Saturdays during the playoffs. It's just, I don't know, it's odd. I mean... Two ga- but I would say you're right, but it's two games on Monday night at the same exact time kickoff. Yeah, I know. Super weird. Super weird. Um, A.J. Dillon uh, was limited in Thursday's practice. This is interesting because Aaron Jones also practicing limited on yep. Thursday, but if I put my if I put, put my money on it, I would say Aaron Jones doesn't play. A.J. Dillon does. But even if, uh, if I think A.J. Dillon... I think Aaron Jones go ahead, is going to go. And now that he's like limited practice like it wasn't supposed to be a long like a long injury so i do think he'll he'll probably give it a go now they're probably playing safe with him the last couple of weeks okay but, so if that's the case then if that's the case how do you feel about this backfield because aj Dillon has gotten the backfield and you know he's been up and down but for the most part like you know averaging out to be like a rb2 pretty like he either craps the bed or has a has a big game. You know, it's all it's all about the touchdowns. Um, yeah. But wasn't producing with Aaron Jones in the lineup. Uh, but Aaron Jones wasn't producing with Aaron Jones in the lineup either. So, like, yeah. how are you looking at this? So, how are you looking at this um, this backfield? Like it's, a, it's a good matchup against the Giants. I do think AJ Dillon would have RB two flex appeal if Aaron Jones were to miss the game. But if Aaron Jones plays. I certainly prefer Aaron Jones to Dylan. That's how it always is when Aaron Jones is active. But you have to take uh like the the ups and downs of Aaron Jones, man. Like week fourteen, if you're playing for a a playoff berth, it's not something you Ooh, uh tough. yeah, it's not something you hope for. Because I mean, Aaron Jones has been atrocious most of the year. He's he's been a top ten running back twice. Otherwise, he's been outside the top 30 running backs every game in which he's played or he's been injured. So it's been a mess. Um, but I mean, they get the Giants on Monday night. It's a it's a good matchup for Aaron Jones in terms of like touchdown um, potential. So if I mean, I'm going to be ranking him as an RB, two as long as it's clear that he's going to be playing this week. Yeah, uh, you took the words out of my mouth as as you were talking as well. Big Will. Just reminded the, the chat that I, I used to love Mitch Trubisky. I, I, that is my worst take of all time and is the one I'm remembered for the most. Like, I, I'll never – That's no one how it goes. Me for, call, for calling the Kyle Shanahan uh, – the Kyle Shanahan dynasty that's going down in the 49ers right now before Shanahan was even a head coach. 
no, 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 no one remembers that in the same year. They remember that I said Mr. Trubisky is going to be good. Ay, ay, ay. ay. <laughs> um, Jaden Reed, also some news on him is that he was limited. On th- Michael, what do you what, – stop, stop, uh, stop uh, what do you call – multitasking. <laughs> Michael, they answered the chat. Um, Jaden Reed was limited with, with a, uh, a chest on Thursday's practice. Uh, Christian Watson – uh, he has a hamstring injury. Now, the problem with the Christian Watson is this is his fourth hamstring injury on the same hamstring since he was drafted. So that's a concern. So, I mean, if yeah. you're the Packers, are you taking the chance against the Giants team that you should be able to beat? Like, are you taking the chance of pushing this guy instead of, like, saving him for the stretch run and letting him injure, like, not re-injure this hamstring? You know how hamstrings are. Like hamstrings are always lingering. Hamstrings, those things will, man, the worst hand, but I've broken my ankle. I've torn my ankle. I've broken my fingers, my thumbs. I've, I've broken, I've broken bones. The worst injury I've ever had is a hamstring injury um, because it never goes away. It never, ever goes away. So I, I don't think he's going to play. And we're going to be talking a lot about um, the, the, uh, the, the repercussions the of that. Yeah. In the second part, by the way, patreon.com slash bro fantasy. If you want to um, get access to this Discord that we're talking about right now, and if you want to hear the entire episode, including including our confidence plays um, coming up, our guys that you could play with some confidence in a must-win matchup. Uh, Josh Palmer was limited in Thursday's practice. That's pretty good. The 21-day window is open for him. You've been stashing Josh Palmer. I do think that this is a guy that, if you're struggling in your flex spot, like this is he's kind of like hallelujah because it's been Keenan Allen and no one else for Justin Herbert. Like no one's been able to be the guy. And we at least know that Josh Palmer has been able to earn targets from Justin Herbert uh, in this, in this offense and that they throw. So I think Josh Palmer can come in sneaky, be a low end wide receiver two, like high end wide receiver three type flex type. um, That, that kind of, that kind of, I don't know, in between those two levels, um, not kill your team, not win you any championships, but a nice little piece. Yeah, I definitely think Palmer is a good guy to, uh, if he's still available in your league, pick him up. Um, we didn't know how long he'd be out, and now it's looking like he may even return as soon as this week. Now that he's getting a limited practice, and he was a wide receiver three, wide receiver two, even before his injury. And we see how badly that offense has been operating. Like even Austin Eckler looks really bad. Like he doesn't look like he's recovered from his injury, unless he's just toast which i don't think he's just toast it kind of it just kind of came out of nowhere um but yeah and then it's really only keenan allen keenan allen keenan allen no one else has even come close to stepping up so i do think josh Palmer would be a welcome addition the patriots are working the Steelers. by the way it's now 21 to 3 hunter henry has two touchdowns hunter henry has two touchdowns yep that's that that is probably pissing off everyone. That helps no one. If you saw Hunter Henry this week, it's probably because you are out of the playoffs and forgot to set a lineup. Let's be real. This guy hasn't been fantasy relevant in forever. Um, so that helps nobody. Uh, Tyler Boyd, uh, his, with his ankle, was limited in Thursday's practice. I mean, Tim, I, I will tell you one thing. probably pretty good, dude. Yeah. Sorry to, sorry to cut you off, but Ken McDuff no, no, in the Beat the Bros League. Kenneth, he's a patron of ours. I don't know what mm-hmm. he knew, but he picked up Hunter Henry like 12 minutes before the game started and started him in his flex. What? In his yeah. flex? Yeah. Ken McDuff? <laughs> yeah, and Yo, he's in the he's in Ken, the playoffs bro. right now. He needs a he needs to win the game and now he has 16 points already from Hunter Henry. Whoa, and this is in the the Beat the Bros League. In the Beat the Bros League, yeah. Bro, that is some Houdini. incredible managing, Ken. <laughs> Bro, let's go. Shout out to Ken. Bro, you're right. I just holy crap. This guy's starting three tight ends. I mean Holy moly. Hunter Henry. Who knew? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, I, had to, I'm I had to shout impressed. out Ken. Yeah. I don't even know how to re- I'm impressed. The <laughs> the iron the iron ball sack on, on Ken and it paid off. I love it. Uh, I cu- I knew Boyd. because I got a I have like Yahoo notifications on and i saw a hunter henry notification i was so confused and now look at that <laughs> <laughs> look at that the only guy in the world i wonder what's his star percentage um probably very low on sleeper hunter henry because i don't even know how do you how do you how do you check that 
I mean, on Yahoo, they'll show you on the on the website. They don't show you on the app. Uh, well, I'm in the I'm in a hallway in my apartment building, so that's not gonna happen. Yes, correct. Right, let's go to Tyler Boyd. Uh, Tyler Boyd was limited in Thursday's practice. Look, Jake Browning looked pretty good. I don't I don't really know where to go with that. But, but Tyler Boyd good. needs to not be in fantasy lineups with Jake Browning and T Higgins healthy again. I think that was made that clear this past week as well because Jake Browning did play very well, like very well. It was shocking. Like shout out to Zach Taylor who. Uh, the cool thing to do is to just shit on every single offensive minded head coach once his team starts winning and act like you know better. And Zach Taylor was a big guy on like Twitter and shit of getting made fun of for whatever reason. And to see what he did with Jake Browning and like his second game started is, I mean, it's pretty fantastic. Like it was pr- pretty wild for him to play that well in that game. And let's see if he's able to keep it going. But yeah, we saw what Jamar Chase was able to do, mix in. T. Higgins got mixed in a little bit, so I don't think Tyler Boyd should really be anywhere in your lineups at this point. You know, I uh, I watched Jake Browning, and I can't help but think we spent the number two pick. I'm a Jets fan, by the way, if you don't know. We spent the number two overall pick on a guy who can't complete a pass, and you got this guy throwing up 300-yard games on Monday night yeah, in, in his second start ever. It's just like a, uh, Amari Cooper did not practice on Thursday. He has a concussion and a rib issue. I have a really hard time believing Amari Cooper is going to play this week. It does seem unlikely. Uh, obviously, I it's mean, only it's con- Thursday, so we can't really tell, but he was already super banged up, and then, like you said, add a concussion to the mix, and it seems highly unlikely. It's going to be a rainy, sloppy game as well, which should be noted, and it's going to be against the Jaguars, who... You know, they're going to probably go with their backup quarterback, C.J. Beathard. So it's going to be in the rain with two pretty good defenses, with two backup quarterbacks, a little third-string quarterback in the case of Cleveland, a guy who was on his couch three weeks ago. Um, Amari yeah. Cooper just might be a guy that even if they do clear him to play, you're going to want to stay away from this week. Yeah, there's been four – there's five, excuse me, five games in the Sunday slate that are supposed to be partly at least affected by rain and wind. Baltimore, Chicago, Cincy, Cleveland, and the Jets. That so, is, uh, could be a weather-ridden fantasy day. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be it's gonna be ugly if that's the case. Um, somebody that's playing one of those ugly games, Travis Etienne. Uh, he was limited in Thursday's practice with a rib injury, but he will probably be ready to go. Um, I mean, the Browns, you know, they were their defense has kind of taken a step back the last couple of weeks, but it's been. Um, not so healthy. Uh, now it's back. It's getting healthier. Miles Garrett uh, looks good to go, and um, Denzel Ward is practicing right now. So I think that you know, don't forget that this Cleveland defense is a very formidable defense. But I think that it's going to be a lot of Travis Etienne, and you're going to call me crazy, Michael. But I think that if you're desperate and you're in a really, really deep league and you're in a just completely wasteland, barren. Uh, just a wasteland of waivers. Like in our main league, bro, the waiver wire is a barren wasteland of nothingness. Bro, every uh, other league that I'm in, there's like someone I could look at on the waiver wire and be like, oh, he's maybe worth flexing. Our home league is like, how how is every single player that's decent roster right now? It's OD annoying. It's annoying, but I love it. That's why I love that league so much. So I care about it so much. Um, but um yeah, where was I? But I think that you can – I think that you might be able to play Travis Etienne, yes, but I think you could play Dearness Johnson. Dearness Johnson has had an uptick in carries and involvement. I think this just might be like an ugly game where they hand the ball off and swing the ball out to the running backs just like a lot. Tim, there's and a 0% chance to start Dearness Johnson unless I'm the I most desperate a, player in the league. Right. I'm talking about if you have a barren wasteland like and you just like – it's either him or you got to start like, like Luke Musk, or not Luke Musgrove, uh, Tyler Tucker Croft, Kraft. something like that. Like I'm talking Tucker Craft. Yeah, like you got it's like that kind of situation. I would play him over guys that are also like he's my most likely the dark horse out of the dark horses that are really dark. I don't know. I think CJ CJ Beathard at QB is a is a hamper of all Jacksonville Jaguars players. Um, like I, Travis Etienne's an RB two for me this week. Uh, Calvin Ridley's a co-wide receiver three for me. Like I don't trust CJ Beathard to do what Trevor Lawrence 
was doing. And we already saw this offense have some struggles this year to begin with. So it's certainly not ideal for CJ Beathard to be there, but it was, it is promising to see Trevor Lawrence already practicing in a limited fashion. You got to assume he's going to be out this week, but maybe he only misses the single week. Yeah. I mean, you gotta, you gotta watch those ankle injuries too. Like those, those will, those are one of those, those are one of those injuries where you, you could, you could shoot it up with the cortisol and you can put a brace around it to the point where like, you don't really feel anything, but everything is connected to, to your ankle. Like everything is connected to your feet. So like yeah. what happens with, with those guys is you notice that they get hamstring injuries or they get hip injuries or groin injuries because these parts of the body are just working too hard to overcompensate. So it's, 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 it's tough, but we'll see how that goes. Um, speaking of this game, speaking of Trevor Lawrence, CJ Beathard was also limited in Thursday's practice. So obviously not, obviously not conducive to success if the guy who's starting for the first time is missing practice or has a limited practice. But I will say this, CJ Beth, Beathard, surprisingly, not surprisingly, I guess he's a quarterback, handsome guy. Super <laughs> handsome. I don't know if you know what he looks like, but he's a, he's got a super handsome picture here. Like, like oh, oh, that's a handsome guy. Um, <laughs> All right, good to uh, know. Jonathan Taylor, Jonathan Taylor didn't practice Thursday. That okay, we know. Uh, let's move it on. Uh, Christian Watson, we talked about him. He's probably not going to play with the hamstring. Uh, we're looking at the wide receivers right now as if he's not going to play. Um, Derek Carr, he got the concussion. He has a rib injury. He has a shoulder injury. He was limited in Thursday's practice. Uh, he has the clear concussion protocol. But I don't know if you've been paying attention to like Saints gossip, but there's been some tension around the Saints uh, with, with Mike, Michael Thomas. Um, he tweeted something about Derek Carr, like when your eyes don't work, you put your receivers in harm's way, which Michael Thomas seems like the worst guy. Like I would probably hate to be Michael Thomas's friend. Like I, I don't want to be ne- even next to that guy. Tim. Um, but that, that doesn't make him wrong. Tim, 20-yard touchdown to Deontay Johnson. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Tim is playing me in our home league in a must win game and he's been fighting all year all week of what to do and he sat Deontay uh, Johnson who just caught a 25 yard touchdown. All right, I mean nine points. It doesn't, yeah. And that's uh, his first man, catch of the I day. Hope. Yeah. It's just kind of funny that uh, he scored. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, for, real funny. Funny for you. Funny for who? Not for, for me, me for sure. Oh. The heartbreaker. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, it's a heartbreaker. Um, let's go into the next piece of news now that my heart is all broken. And, and, and uh, but I do have Deontay Johnson in another league where I can get a buy if I win. So I'm, you know, there you go. A little, and little if it makes of, you uh, feel, if it makes you feel better, Mitch Trubisky, solid throw from Mitch. That doesn't make me feel better at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lamar Jackson missed Thursday's practice due to an illness. Uh, hopefully he doesn't play because the Rams have been a fantasy smorgasbord for QBs so far. Hopefully yeah. he plays. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's cold and flu season, man. It's, it's, it's tough out here. Um, Rashid Shahid, Rashid Shahid did not practice on Thursday. Uh, it would be a long shot for him to go since he missed last week. So I'll proceed as if he's not going. Um, this one so. is a tough one. Taysom Hill did not participate in practice on Thursday. So, if he's able to get at least a limited practice in on Friday, I would imagine that he's going to start. Um, and if I, I am very interested in Taysom Hill if he, if he plays because you have a situation where Carolina cannot stop uh, any t- sort of run. And the running quarterback, they're first in points over average. I mean, and, and, um, it's true matchup, true matchup ranking uh, to the running quarterback and, if Jameis Winston is in and Derek Carr can get a clutch and portable call, it's going to be Taysom getting a bunch of snaps. So um, I'm hoping that this is a situation where it's like they know that he's going to be getting a bunch of snaps. They want to preserve him because he does have these aches and he does have these minor injuries that are not going to keep him out. So that's why he's being kept out today. That's my hope. My fear is that this is an injury that might make him miss a game or two. And uh, that would be, yeah, devastating for a guy who has been a pretty big godsend for those who got in at the right time. Yeah, no, I agree, 100%. Uh, We already talked about these Packers. Isaiah Pacheco didn't practice on Thursday, which is very concerning because right now, I mean, it looks like he's going to play. I always always find, like, like the – 
the blurbs for players funny. Like in our home league, for example, I saw Pacheco didn't practice on Wednesday. So I picked up Jarek McKinnon just because uh, I was like, oh, this is interesting. I know some days, um, some Wednesdays players like don't practice. It's whatever. But the blurb for Pacheco was like, he simply bruised his shoulder. It's pr- He's just taking a day off, like as if they know. And then he misses Thursday's practice. And the new blurb is he's in real danger of missing this week's game. It's like, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, how about you just wait and fucking see instead of just blabbering about nothing that you know about it? Yeah, we don't know if Isaiah Pacheco is going to play. I think tomorrow is going to be very telling to see if he could get through whatever shoulder ailment he's dealing with. But yeah, it's certainly not ideal if you have Pacheco because it's a it's a very good matchup that he's in. I mean, his his expert consensus rank was four when I got in. So yeah, yeah, it's a it's a good matchup and. He's been a he's been a good player this year. He is not disappointed. And, oh uh, yeah, he's definitely been, he's a, been a really great value. He's proven me wrong for sure. Yeah, for sure. I was I was uh, I was eh on Pacheco going into the year. Like he was just like whatever. I don't have I don't have any shares of him, so I was it's not. Because he took over the Pacheco, sure. pass catching role as well. That's why I didn't like him. And then now that he catches passes and runs a ton, solid player. And this. And in the twist of the year, the Kansas City Chiefs have turned to a run and defense team yeah. um, out of nowhere. I think I think at, at this point, Andy Reid is just kind of like toying with us all. But no, I'm, I'm bored. Too. Let's let's see if I can do it this way. Go ahead. I know they don't have uh, a real wide receiver weapon. Like they're trying to make it work with their guys. But like last year, the offense wasn't this bad, and they really only had Juju besides these guys. Um, and my thought is, and then you see what Sam Howell's doing in Washington. Mm. Is Eric Bieniemy actually like an offensive genius or what? <laughs> no one has even considered that. Yeah, you're the first person I've seen. I've heard like bring that up. Like maybe Eric Bieniemy actually like everyone always said, "Oh, Bieniemy's not getting a head coaching job because it's Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes." But now it's the first year without Eric Bieniemy. Yeah, they're short on weapons. But that offense has looked super mediocre, and meanwhile, Sam Howell's leading the league in passing yards as a first-year starter, <laughs> fifth-round pick in his sophomore year. Michael, man, I wish we were on camera right now. I'd love to clip that and put it on social media, to be honest. That was a good, was a good take. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking about I it agree. the other day. I was like, this is interesting, man. Um. Yeah, man, like Eric Bieniemy, like he's the best kept secret in football. Maybe this guy gets no love, man. What's yeah, up? Yeah, I know. That? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I like, was one of the guys who that. was like, hey, you know, it's probably Andy Reid. But, <laughs> but then you see what Sam Howell's I mean, doing in the Chiefs. Was. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, this is exactly um, why he left the Chiefs to go to the Commanders to get a shot to be his own, his own guy there, and I think it's working. Yeah, for sure. Um, Brees Hall missed Thursday's practice with an ankle. Uh, I think this is the only team, this is all, the only running back situation where if you know that someone's going to be a workhorse and the, like, let's say Brees Hall misses it and Dalvin Cook plays, you know that Dalvin Cook's going to be a workhorse. Yet I don't think, I don't think I have any interest in starting Dalvin Cook like over even like a Jamison Williams. Brees Hall said like he's going to. Noah Brown. Brees Hall said he's he's gonna play though, so okay. I not believe him. All right, well, all right, well. I, I mean, he's been terrible, um, but you can't blame him. Yeah. Uh, I follow a bunch of Jets beat writer beat writers on um, Michael Nania, who does like uh or or Nania or something like what N A N I A. Yeah, I know. Um, okay. On Twitter, yeah, he does breakdowns. He does like film breakdowns, and he showed that. Brees Hall got hit in the backfield or at the line of scrimmage on literally every single one that he had last week. That's, uh, that's what yeah, I mean, he's averaging like zero yards one. before contact. It's absurd. Um, let's run through some more news here. Tyreek Hill not seen at Thursday's practice. Are you concerned? That doesn't matter, no. He, he's done this like three weeks in a row. Raheem Mostert not seen at Thursday's practice. Are you concerned? No, he also takes a bunch of days off, and apparently it's working because it's the first time he's actually been healthy this year. I'm gonna tell you what, Michael. If Raheem Mostert misses this game, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna, th- I'm gonna, I'm just gonna throw you off the balcony. Like, I am Devon a chain, which is why Tim is saying that. 
Lamar Jackson did not practice Thursday. We mentioned that already. Uh, Dalton Schultz hamstring was not spotted, spotted at practice. It looks like he's going to miss another game. Um, Mike McCarthy had surgery to undergo an appendectomy um, this week, but looks like he's going to be on the sidelines for the game. Um, you ever know? You know anyone ever had their appendix burst and needed an, app- an appendectomy? Like what's? I don't. Have no. you ever? No. Yeah, me neither. I've never, or I did, maybe I don't know. I don't. Doesn't know, sound but, fun. Uh, doesn't sound fun at all. But it also doesn't sound like it's going to be like uh, an issue for him. So that's good. Um, Hayden Hurst said he was dealing with post-traumatic amnesia, suffered after a concussion week ten. I guess it just means he forgot everything. Yeah, it's like right, uh, so let's, let's... it's kind of like Fifty First Stage style. Like he's he's forgetting things that like just kind of happened. Um, it looks not like to that Joe extent. But... Be... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks like Joe Flacco is going to be the starter. <laughs> also, Puka Nakua is going to play, so you could fire Puka Nakua even though it's not a great matchup. Justin Jefferson practicing full on Wednesday. Uh, that's fantastic. He's news. back. Uh, Dallas. Dallas Goddard is back as well. What are, what are your thoughts on Dallas Goddard? Are you are you willing to play him right away? I know the yeah, answer I mean, to this question. Dallas Goddard was considering. Um, he said he was he wanted to play last week, and then he got a uh, two full practices. He's not even on the injury report anymore. Um, he started the season off extremely slowly, and then picked it up a bit. He obviously had some mediocre games, but yeah, the, we know how big of a wasteland. Uh, the tight end position is, and this is a shootout potential type game against Dallas, so I do think Goddard catch um, a decent amount of balls, maybe find the end zone. Um, Deontay Foreman is back at practice, so that means Deontay Foreman, who was the lead back when the uh, when um, when Khalil Herbert was out, and then Khalil Herbert, who was the lead back originally, and then got hurt, and then came back and was not the lead back. It was Rashawn Johnson, who was the lead back, who was the backup when Deontay Foreman. Uh, was running the ball. Uh, Michael, which one of these guys can you start? Which one of these guys would you start if you if you had to? Like, what is like? How are you looking at this backfield, and what do you think? I mean, I wouldn't want to start any of them if I had to. I'd probably slightly lean Deontay Foreman just because I feel like he probably will get the first goal line carry, and that's literally the only I reason. I agree. I think that. Uh, I think the way I'd order it is probably Deontay. Deontay Foreman, Roshan Johnson, and then Khalil Herbert. Yeah, because Johnson pl- got more carries and targets than Herbert last time they played together a couple weeks ago. It's like the – what is that, Michael? You're good at math. Is that the transitive property? Well, if you're talking like about, like, high if, school math. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think if, that's if, what the transitive property is. If Roshan or equals like greater than Herbert yeah. – If Roshan equals greater than Herbert and Herbert equals greater than – then Foreman, then Foreman equals greater than like do that math and you'll you'll get there. Yeah. Um, all right, let's let's end this. That's on, why the like, Jets the are the best. The Jets are the best team in the league because they beat the Eagles. Yes, uh, keep keep telling yourself that, Michael. Speaking of the Jets, Jack, Zach Wilson is starting again this week. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Uh, it, Zach Wilson confirmed better than Trevor Simeon. And the other guy whose name I already forgot. It's crazy. Wow. Tim Boyle. Today. Who's not even on the Jets anymore. That guy, like, what, like, who's, like, who's his father that, like, he was even on a team? Or, like, ever got an NFL Beats me, man. Beats me. being the worst college quarterback ever. Um, All right. Let's let's end this on, on this interesting note. Austin Eckler. He said... A co- quote, a competition for carries is going to be something that you can see happening. Hold up, what? Um, as if Austin Ackler, it says right here, as this is from ESPN.com, uh, Tom Pelissero, I think. Uh, no, he works for NFL.com. This is ESPN.com, no author. Uh, as if Austin Eckler managers haven't been through enough, it sounds like the Chargers are ready for, to further entertain the idea of a more split backfield. We saw that in week 13 when Eckler played just 57% of the team snaps, his fewest since week one when he went and when he suffered an injury. Eckler's having 3.5 yards per carry, you know the deal. Um, man, I, dude, like, I think this is clearly an injury thing, but how do you go to this? Like, are you picking up Josh Kelly? Like, what are you doing here? Yeah, I mean, I think picking up Josh Kelly isn't the worst thing. He's also been terrible when Eckler was out. 
like that's scoring a big thing. Like, two Josh fantasy Kelly points. Yeah, so I mean, it's not someone I'd be excited to start, but at this point, I think Austin Eckler is a RB two. Like you can't rank Austin Eckler as a top ten running back anymore. Like I don't know what's going on with him. It does seem like he's probably still like working through the um the ankle injury. He's not getting as involved in the passing game. It's just it's been ugly. Uh, all right, Michael. While I soak all over the fact that Deontay Johnson scored a touchdown, um, we are going to head over to patreon.com slash Roto Fantasy, and we are going to give you our confidence play. So we're each going to give you three guys that you could start with confidence um, in your must-win matchups. Guys that, like, we're not going to give you, like, C.D. Lamb. Like, the, we're not going to make you pay for that. But we're going to give you Yeah, because three obviously guys you should sit C.D. Lamb. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, uh, I'll give you a hint. Last week, um, man, last week I went, I went berserk bonkers. I got all three of my, of my guys hit. I picked Tua, I picked Taysom Hill, and I picked Evan Ingram. So uh, come, come see us this week if you want some more insight like that on how to get a little, get, get have some confidence in your uh, like mid-range kind of plays um, or even low-range kind of plays uh, in this very, very important, very, very important um, week. Now, the week in the regular season. All right, Mike. Yep. Um, that's all for us. Also, follow us on Twitter slash X. Uh, is it called X now? Like, when you open – when you, what do you see on the app? Because I haven't updated the app, so I still see Twitter. Does everyone else see X? Well, yeah, I see X. But, like, it's still – if I go X? to Twitter.com, it brings me to X. I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah, but But, the, like, on your phone, like, the, the icon is a black X. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't updated my phone. My icon is still like the the light blue Twitter bird, and I think I've got, I'm not gonna update this so I can just keep it like that. <laughs> anyway, okay. um, follow us there at Brodo FF Tim, at Brodo FF Mike, at Brodo FF Casanova. A special, well, uh, at Brodo FF Jason, a special, special, special happy birthday shout out to our guy, a guy that you know is the unsung. Actually, if you're a patron, you he sung the sung hero of Brodo Fantasy, a guy who really the wheels of Brodo Fantasy do not turn without this guy. Uh, Psych Ward, the Dynasty Goat, the Dynasty Don, um, an excellent writer, an excellent dude. Um, look, I, I've, I've been very good with my drafts and my rookie predictions, and it's all because of Matt. Like, I literally just listen to Matt's advice. I follow Matt's advice, and it makes me not draft Quinton Johnston. And it makes me find guys like Justin Jefferson when he was a rookie and a guy like Tua this year when he's a rookie. So, I mean, not Tua, um, uh, Puka. So, very, very happy birthday shout out at Psych Ward, Matt Ward, um, the director of content and uh, over at, at the website and for Brodo. So, very, very big shout out to Matt and happy birthday to him. Happy birthday, Matt. The, 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 that's all, folks. Oh, Michael, my bad. Hey, you what stole you it from me tonight. Tell me what you ate. Um, me and my fiance actually did a breakfast for dinner day. Oh, but interesting. What eggs, eggs, hash browns, and uh, and toast. I mean, uh, uh eggs, hash browns, home fries, toast. not hash browns. Home fries. So you went, so you went like simple breakfast, not like you didn't go like pancakes and we're gonna make pancakes or like we don't need that much food. I roasted a chicken today for the family. Roast chicken, great, because it feeds you for a few days. Um, you know, I, and I always carve it. Like, I'm the carver of the chicken. And after I'm done carving it, I eat the carcass. That's, that's what I eat. Like, the, all the white meat and all the meat that's left over on the bones after I, I do the chicken. Delicious. That's my, that's my surgery. It's the best meat, bro. It's like, it's like, it's like dark meat texture. Like, not really, but dark meat softness but it's white meat because it's right by the bone and it's so juicy, man. Delicious. Had a great dinner tonight. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that being said, peace out. Everybody. That's all folks. <laughs>